the recent Johor State election, only 14% of eligible young voters actually voted, despite Undi 18 having come into effect after years of non-stop activism. Those that oppose the Undi 18 bill because young Malaysians aren't mature enough might be feeling a bit smug now. But the reality is much more complex. So let's have a quick breakdown. I think young voters in general are very anti-establishment, right? So, so to say that there's a lot of distrust in institutions, in government processes. And I think we can see that reflected, especially in a Johor state election. Number one, it was a state election, which means that for many young people who live or study outside of Johor, find it very hard to find incentives to come back and vote especially when it's only a state-level election. State-level issues, local issues, are often not directly impacting young people who live outside of Johor, uh, which could explain uh, the low voter turnout. But I think more importantly, we need to address that there is a level of political apathy going on among young people. And I think um, what's happening, you know, you see here is that young people don't believe that politicians are the solution to their daily problems. Because a lot of times, um, you know, even the whole reason why Johor went to election was because of power struggle, not because they needed or the term was ending up. We can't just say that because not many people turn out for a state level election, people won't turn out for a national level election. Because generally during a general election, employers might give the day off uh, and people also have more awareness about postal voting for example. So I think we can pull some indicators to see uh, if we deep dive into the specific saluran, what's concerning was the age group of 25 to 40 year olds actually. They were very, very low, historically low, which means that, you know, we can probably assume that, you know, why are young professionals, for example, not interested to vote? According to this 2019 study, there are three main factors leading to political apathy among Malaysian youth. Number one, a close political climate. Number two, the perception of politics as dirty. And number three, the perception that elections serve the self-gain of politicians. I would say that these three sentiments make sense. I think as a young person myself, I can't deny that I do feel a little bit of cynicism and you know, even a bit of frust a lot of frustration actually with politicians, especially in the past few years. Um, if you have been observing closely Malaysian politics, I think you can't blame people for being extremely frustrated. In 2018, Malaysia voted differently for the very first time. This was extremely historic because it was also the first election where we had an incredible historical turnout rate. Young people voted for something else. And less than two years later, our decision was reversed uh, due to uh, politicking and party hopping. And at the same time, uh, you know, you also have COVID, you also have crisis like, uh, like recession and inflation where people are struggling their day to day and they have no choice and they can't help it but to blame and look to politicians. Political socialisation among youth is actually at its lowest since 2015, according to the Malaysian Youth Index, dropping from a score of 45.8 back then to 27.8 in 2020. So what can we do to reverse this trend? I think civic education is an extremely important component. We see this globally as an element about youth participation. It's about giving them the, the skill sets for them to make those decisions on their own. Knowledge of politics comes from learning and experience to engage with younger people, um, to offer them opportunities with working in local government. I did internships, uh, working in political offices, moving around in terms of uh, following candidates, working on campaigns. And the second thing that I think is important is all also to, uh, to recognize the diversity of younger people, right? Uh, you know, uh, and to not compartmentalize their participation into a particular area. So like youth are in charge of youth things. No, youth have views on education. And they also have views on foreign policy. So they have to be able to gain that knowledge uh, and to be able to participate in different arenas. If people understand what, they're, what the reasons for them to vote, for example, they will participate more likely in the political process. Young people especially are trying to mix sense of what's happening so they do research they advocate you know you see a rise of campaigns and Instagram pages of young people coming forward um, you know hoping to educate more young people or their peers on issues that matter to them but you also see a shift in how we how young people look at politics they're very tired of personalities I think that's very clear but 
they hyper focus on raising awareness on issues like climate change, gender equality, police brutality, uh, death penalty. So you see a rise of young people talking about these issues. Um, so I think what we might see you know, in the next general election is that uh, you have more young people demanding better policies and better solutions and not just talking about who's going to be our Prime Minister. Getting young people involved in the election process is a cornerstone of democracy. Many current issues being debated will have a bigger impact on young people in the future. Giving them the opportunity, as we have it only 18, is a great step. But this needs to come hand in hand with political education to create a healthier democracy.